Let's talk about multiplying mixed numbers. I know, I know this is exciting to all of you, right? Now, if we were to estimate this, do some rounding, estimating. Four and a half is about what? That would round to five, right? And what about five and four ninths? What would that round to? Now, that would round to five because half of nine is four and a half. So this guy's just under, it's just under five. Or just, excuse me, it's just under four and a half. And then notice what you did here. You rounded up on this guy, you rounded down on this. So it's not that they completely cancel each other out how you round that, but I think this would be, you know, the 25 should be a lot closer to our answer than had we rounded down on both of those. Because think about it, if you round down here and you round it down here, then you know that your, final, your estimated answer is going to be a lot lower than what the real answer is. So I expect an answer around 25. Does that mean my answer will be 25? No. So when I'm multiplying mixed numbers, don't be stupid. Listen to me and follow my instructions. To multiply fractions, I multiply straight across, right? The problem with that, though, is that this is not a fraction. It's a mixed number. But can I make it a fraction? Can I, I can make this a mixed fraction by writing this as what? <coughs> I can make this 9 over 2. How did we get that? 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Times, what about this fraction over here? What happens? 9 times 5 is 45, plus 4 is 49. So 49 ninths. Do you all agree? Okay. Now, you know that before I multiply all of this, I should reduce if I can. Are there any common factors between the numerators and the denominators? The, yeah. Right there, the nines are yelling at you to reduce them. So this reduces to give you a 1. Can I reduce the 49 with anything? Or the 2 with? Nope. All right, so what do I have here? This is 49 over 2. Now let me give you a general rule of thumb here. If the problem starts off with mixed numbers, typically they want the answer to be what? A mixed number. If it starts off with improper fractions and proper fractions, just leave it as an improper fraction. And read the instructions. I mean, sometimes it'll say, leave your answer as a mixed number. Or sometimes it'll say, just leave your answer in lowest terms. If it said lowest terms, 49 over 2 would be fine, but we want to make this into a mixed number. How many times does 2 go into 49? It goes into 24 with the remainder of what? Remainder of 1, so that's over 2. So this is what my exact answer is, right? And I estimated the answer to be 5. So I feel pretty good about my answer, right? Does that mean that my answer is right? Not necessarily. It just means that my answer is reasonably close to, uh, it, it's reasonable. It makes sense. If I had my estimation being 100 and this was my answer, something's not right. So multiplication with mixed numbers, you convert to improper fractions and then you multiply. You got that, right? So let's change this up a little bit. What if I have 3 and 1 fourth divided by 1 and 3 eighths. 3 and a fourth divided by 1 and 3 eighths. If I had to estimate this, so my estimation over here, how would you round 3 and a quarter? You round this to about 3 divided by 1 and 3 eighths would round to what? It, it's clo is it closer to 1 or 2? It's closer to 1, right? And so we might say that our answer should be about 3. Now, I know right now that that's not really a good estimation. I'd say the answer is closer to 2. but And the reason I'm thinking that is that you rounded down here, right? You rounded down for this guy. 
says we're really going to throw off things in terms of our estimation. Well, what do you think I'm going to do here? When I was multiplying mixed numbers, I converted to improper. I converted both of them to improper fractions. What do you think I'll do here? Do the same thing. So three and one fourth converts to what? Thirteen over four. Divided by what? 11 over 8. But wait a minute, we talked about this before. When you divide fractions, you to flip. keep the first guy the same, right? We flip the second guy. That's the reciprocal, remember that? And we change this to multiplication. Is there any simplifying that I can do before I multiply? 4 and 8 have a common factor of what? So 4 goes in here once. 4 goes into 8 twice. So what do we have? Twenty-six. 26 over 11, which if we make this a mixed number becomes what? <coughs> How many times does 11 go into 26? Two. Twice with a remainder of what? Four. So 2 and 4 over 11. 2 and 4 elevenths. Is that reasonably close to our estimation from the beginning? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I feel good about this guy. What do you guys think? Is it straightforward enough? We're converting it back to improper fractions and when we do that then it's something that we know. It's something that we know. When you're rounding, you just look at the fractional part right here. For example, what's half of 4? 2. If the numerator is half of this guy or greater, you round up. If it's not, you just round down. So here, half of 8 is 4. 3 is less than 4, so you round down to the 1. 1 is less than half of 4, so it's less than 2. So you round this guy down to 3. And again, the, es oh, okay. the estimating is not, it's not a mandatory thing, but it, again, it's, it's useful. And if we were to do something like this, I could ask you to find the area if I gave you Suppose I gave you a rectangle. We all love rectangles, right? And if I were to say that this guy is 3 and 4 sevenths inches, and this part here is 1 and 7 tenths inches. Can you find the area? Well, this would be a good question to have on a, on a test. Because it takes the stuff, yeah, I know, see, you're happy. It takes the stuff from the last test, and now we're just throwing fractions into it. See, too bad you, you two people can't see how all the smiles on these faces. So what do you know about the area when it comes to a rectangle? It's the base times the height. So the base here is 3 and 4 sevenths. And the height is 1 and 7 tenths. Do you all agree? If I had to round these guys, if I had to estimate 3 and 4 sevenths, would that round up or down? It would actually, it would actually round up because half of 7 is 3.5. So this guy would round up to about 4. What about this guy? Would he round up or down? He would round up. So if I were rounding, this guy rounds up, this guy rounds up too, so 4 times 2 is 8. Now if I round up on both of those, that means that my estimation is going to be higher than the actual answer. I know that. So let's uh, figure this out. To multiply these two numbers, I have to do what first? 
Make them improper fractions. And what is 3 and 4 sevenths? That's 25 over 7. And 1 and 7 tenths. What is that? 17 over 10. Is there any reducing that I can do? 10 and 25 have a common factor of what? So those would reduce by a factor of 5. That gives me a 5 here. It gives me a 2 here. Is there anything else here that can be done? Can I cross out the 7s? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> it, that's it. That, that, that was a joke. Don't do that. So what's 5 times 17? So we have 85 over 2 times 7 is 14. All right, so let's go back to a mixed number. 14 goes into 85 how many times? I'll give you a hint, it's between 1 and 15 million. <laughs> Do the long division. Six. It's going to be 6 with a remainder of what? Six. 6 with a remainder of 1. When I do 14 into 85, 14 goes in 6. 6 times 14 is? 84, and there's your remainder of 1. But I can't leave my answer like this. So for my final answer, what is the area for this rectangle? 6 and 1 14th square inches. Right? We can't forget the units. I mean, that'd be like wearing white after Labor Day. So our estimation was 8. We said the estimation was over because I had to round up on both of those. So this needed to be under. So I feel good about that. Yes, Valerie? What is it that you did in red? Here? Mm -hmm. I reduced these guys by a common factor of 5. 5 goes in here 5 times, and 5 goes in here twice. So I was just trying to use a different color to show how I was reducing each of those. That's all. Any other questions about this? Now, please understand that had I not reduced this, I should have still come up with this answer. But you would have had 25 times 17, which sounds a bit on the gross side. That's what, 425? So if I were to play around with that number here on the side, that would give you 425 over 70, right? 70 goes into 425 six times with a remainder of 5. And guess what 5 over 70 reduces to? 1 14th. It'll still work, but I don't want to deal with the larger numbers if I don't have to. Make your numbers smaller. Make your life easy. That's the Math Man 1024 way.